What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, if you're just getting here, please get down there and hit a uh, subscribe for us. I would greatly appreciate that. If you guys are returning viewers, man, I really appreciate you guys coming back and watching my content over and over again, man, because it really gets my views up. It really gets, uh, you know, my content out there. It helps the algorithm a lot. So please feel free to take my stuff and share it around to your friends and uh, hit a like and a subscribe for us down there. Uh, today's video, what I'm going to talk about is laying out a good goal list for your dog and what that kind of looks like and what that kind of entails. Now, number one, um, we have to know what we've just gotten, right? So we have to know what stage our dog is at when we got it, if we didn't get it at a pup. And then we also want to know a little bit of information about the breeding of that dog. Okay, so one way that we can get accurate information uh, from the dog is from the breeder, right? And I'm not talking about the guy that just had a litter of pups off a stud dog. I'm talking about the guy that actually created this line, the guy that's actually currently pushing and breeding and line breeding these dogs. Um, these are the guys that you're going to want to listen to when they tell you about the dogs. Um, these guys that are been in it for 40, 50, 60 years, been breeding dogs that whole time. Um, these are the guys that you're going to get your best information from. These are the guys that you can almost count on what they tell you about a bloodline of dogs um, is going to actually truly uh, be accurate, right? So when we're doing that, we have to, number one, we have to know what we have, and then we have to be able to judge our pup, right? So there's a lot of different ways to judge a pup, and you can just tell, you know, if you've been around a lot of dogs, just looking at a dog, looking at it in its eyes, and just kind of being like, okay, so I can see that right on your face, you're just going to be a flat out mean son of a gun. I can tell that you're going to be gun ho. I can tell you're dumber than a box of rocks. You know, it, it's, we have to know what we're working with. Um, this sense to get a dog to really start up early, the dumber the dog, the better. Uh, that's my opinion about it. If you want a dog to start really fast and really early, um, just a real dumb dog, a dog that's not really alert, not really paying attention to what's going on outside of itself. Um, these are the dogs that will essentially just do anything, right? They, they'll they go for it, they'll go for it, they'll go for it. The dogs that have a lot of brains, the dogs that are super smart, the dogs that you can see like they're always side-eyeing you because they they like, ah, okay, I know what's coming. Oh, I know what you're up to this time. Oh, uh, that, yeah, yeah, this is the same little get up as last time. Those are the dogs that are going to give you a serious issue um, getting things accomplished, especially if we put a bad taste in their mouth. So if we get the dog that is smarter than a tech and it's always side-eyeing you, know, being a suspe uh, like suspecting you of doing stuff, like, oh, he's going to do something I ain't going to like, or he's going to scold me for this or something like that, whatever the case may be, those are the dogs that you're going to have a harder time getting to roll over and taking hold of a concept that you're trying to translate onto them. Okay, so that being said, we got to know what we have, what we're working with. We got to know. We got to know. Um, some, some training tactics are just out of the question for certain dogs at certain ages. Um, just for flat out kind of like safety reasons, flat out kind of... Um, there's no way that you're going to accomplish this task with this dog without putting a bad taste in the mouth for the dog. Um, so that's one thing too, is we have to be kind of mindful and be aware of where our dog is at mentally um, and mature wise, right? So um, sometimes it is way more beneficial to have a immature dog uh, do things because they're immature, they're inexperienced, they don't know a difference, you know, they ain't got a bad taste put in their mouth for things and a lot of these dogs um you put a bad taste in a dog's mouth or they don't take to something right away it may be three or four months down the road now that they that you can try again to get them to go ahead and take a hold of something so we have to be very cautious and that's one thing that you always have to have in your head um i know a lot of guys get super ahead of themselves um i've done this plenty of times you know back training dogs or starting pups or doing whatever is you get so far ahead of yourself you get outside of the possibility of negative things and then you go ahead and you go ahead with something and then the net, then you just immediately regret doing it right then because it's like okay I mean I should have looked at this as an outside abstract thing and really really thought through the pros 
pros and the cons, right? So it's always, you look at the dog, you know what you got, you know what your dog's behavior is like, you know your dog's personality, you know the intelligence level, you know the maturity level, you know the size, the, the tenaciousness, the whatever it is. You have to be able to gauge all those things in that dog because the more accurate picture you have of your dog um, and the more accurate understanding you have of your dog, the more accurate information that you're going to have to act and lay out groundwork for your dog to get things done for it, right? Some guys can have the dog they look at at 10 weeks old and go, that dog's going on a cage today because I know that that dog's going to light that cage up. And other guy's going to look at their dog and go, I might not show you a cage for six or eight months because you're just that kind, right? You have to be able to have that, that, um, that ability to do that, right? Um, because at the end of the day, the only thing that's gonna happen to you is you might have a little couple of strokes of luck, but you're gonna end up with a lot of bad experience and a lot of bad taste in your mouth for not having their accurate information. And we don't want that. We want the best outcome and we want the best timeline and we want the, 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 the best experience for us and the dog. And the only way that we get that is having a good accurate judge on your dog. Um, some dogs may may be able to skip steps, right? And that's that's a whole thing too. Is I have started dogs on tails. I've started dogs on scent drags. I've started dogs on hides. I've started dogs on dead coons, on frozen coons. I've started dogs straight up on first thing they ever did with a coon was see a live coon uh, in a cage. I've had them started off of feeders. I've had them started off of running with other dogs. I've had them started off of just getting coons shot down to them. There's a hundred ways to start a dog, um, but just because there's a hundred ways to do things, not one thing is the best for every single dog. And that's why we have to have a good accurate judge because you can look at a dog at three months old and go, you can see a cage today because I know what kind of dog you are or you're not going to see a cage. You're going to see a tail, um, and we're going to get you on there, right? So we have to, like, have the, inquisit the inquisitive side of things, like how inquisitive is the dog, how curious is the dog, how nose-driven, how scent-driven, how mouthy, how loud or uh, obnoxious this dog behaves. Is this dog even at a maturity level to where I can even get him off leash long enough to teach him anything, right? So we have all these things. Uh, that we have and the gauging the dog with the accurate meter will tell you just how many steps that you actually need to take to get from point A to point B right and that is where I come in this is where the channel comes in the channel content comes in is I'm trying to get translated to you guys how to pick out the best scenarios and the best situations by judging the character of a dog by judging a dog that's the one main key thing if you don't have a good way or are not very good at judging a dog, then it is going to be very much more hard for you to get a dog trained. Not saying that it's impossible to train a dog with not being able to judge it, but it is going to take you a lot more effort. You're going to have a lot more failings. You're going to be failing uh, way more often than you should. Your dog is going to be showing you things that you don't know why it's showing you because you've accidentally sidetracked it and trained it something that you don't have any idea that it's going to look like in the woods over here and i think that's why on the channel i try to be very direct um and very precise on this doing this will do this right um and the one way that we get that is we have to experience it and i've experienced it when i say okay so when we work a dog on a tree with a cage um and we put a, a lot of good tree work on a dog, that dog is going to be way more apt in the woods to go ahead and tree up. Um, if we work way too much on the tree, we could turn a dog into a slip treeer because it's just lickety split. Oh, I'm close to tree. I'm close to tree. And it's just kind of one of those things. And we have to have a gauge on how much is too much of a, a thing. And we have to have a gauge on what is a good thing and a good timed thing, right? So... Um, sometimes the best thing for a dog is to just put it up, right? So the best thing for a dog sometimes is may look like put it up for a month. Don't mess with it. Don't train on it. Uh, you know, just leave it set up and mature up. Think about things. Get a little clean slate in its head. 
and get a new revamp, a new look on life when it comes out and gets worked on a little bit more. Um, so we have to always know that's an option too. And sometimes that is the best option, right? So, and this is the best option for these dogs that show you stuff super duper young, super duper uh, young dogs that want to show you, oh, maybe he got out of the cage at 10, 15 weeks old, 10, 12 weeks old, and he was just a savage on a cage at 10, 15 weeks old. Well, it's really easy to go ahead, oh, trap another one, show him another one, trap another one, show him another one, trap another one, show him another one. And we just overwork the dog, and then by the time the dog's five months old, six months old, he's like, yeah, I don't care about a cage. I don't care about a coon. Um, maybe it's just really good sometimes to get a dog to do something well one time, put it up for a while, and then try it again and see if it does it well again, and then put it up for a good long while and, and just keep this really easy kind of pace. Um, some dogs are super fast paced. Other dogs are uh, just irritably slow paced on getting things done. Um, so that being said, you guys, thank you for coming in and checking out the content. I know I had a little bit of an audio issue where I had a couple people that couldn't hear the video. Hopefully I'm getting that worked out. I am using a new mic. I'm using a, a new camera set up um, for a new camera app for my phone. So I have lots of adjusting and tinkering to do still yet. So if you guys notice something, um, please let me know because I'll try to get remedied uh, as soon as I possibly can. Um, so shout out to you guys that came in and let me know that you're just having a hard time hearing me. So I'm kind of uh, talking a little bit louder. I've adjusted my mic level and I've turned that up. So hopefully this is nice and suitable for everybody. Um, but don't forget to use uh, promo code Melbrook5 at dogtra.com for 5% off a product, $200 or more. And if you guys like this content, if you guys like this video, please hit a like and subscribe down there for us on the channel and hit that notification bell to get notified when we post more. And I want to give a huge shout out to everybody that is a consistent viewer that comes in and repeatedly watches my content. I greatly, greatly appreciate you guys more than what you know. And we're going to keep pumping out the content. I know that the, um, I'm having uh, kind of like a decline in the, um, the ability of the channel and how much views I've been getting because so many seasons have went out. Uh, it went out here in Michigan. It's went out all over the place. And uh, people aren't really watching this stuff, but I'm going to keep you guys updated. I'm going to keep you guys in touch and in tune. And we're going to keep out good content for you guys. So thanks for coming in and keep them treating.